right, so I wanted to talk about uh, Bernie Sanders' recent appearance on Anderson Cooper, where he essentially addressed a very critical and or crucial question in regards to being challenged by Anderson Cooper, whether a reinvigorated Demos that voted in the highest numbers ever for Biden, will they stay engaged and will some of this actually spill over as it pertains to actual definitive and or concrete policies? And of course, Bernie Sanders' policies differ from Biden, but nonetheless, Biden did sort of incorporate some of Sanders' policies into his 2020 platform, and that included raising the federal minimum wage to $15. Now, you're not going to get Medicare for all when it comes to Biden, but you still should get the public option, as well as that Medicare age being dropped down. Furthermore, you should also be getting from Biden, as Biden talked about, a more conscious and or uh, urgency in regards to dealing with climate change. Now, I've been on record saying that you're not going to get much in terms of Biden and or Harris administration when it comes to actual concrete and definitive policy. You're getting a more colorful sort of neoliberal administration, but you're not going to get the specific policies, especially policies that Biden advocated for. And Bernie talks about here with his interview on Anderson uh, Cooper that it is going to take a sort of monumental effort to get some of these policies through regardless of what happens in regards to Georgia and who gets that Senate seat or who gets both of those Senate seats, even if Democrats do get those Senate seats, I still don't think that any of these policies will be fought for by the Biden administration. Because the point of emphasis that Bernie Sanders has often talked about is that monumental policies can only take shape and or become a reality when ordinary people organize and mobilize and come together to expand the scope of democracy. And of course he points to the civil rights movement and as well as the women's movement, as well as the movement for the LGBTQ community, and even the Black Lives Matter movement that has, of course, changed the conversation at large in regards to policing and or dealing with issues pertaining to police brutality. And Bernie does take a sort of optimistic viewpoint that these policies of dealing with issues pertaining to Medicare, dealing with issues pertaining to climate change, dealing with issues pertaining to wage stagnation should be the utmost importance for the Biden administration. And he even mentions how they should incorporate his perspectives that consisted of even going to traditional red states such as Kentucky and advocating for these policies because essentially they are policies that would disproportionately help out the working class, let alone the downtrodden, especially in states like Kentucky, where Bernie mentions and mentioned during the Democratic primaries that he would essentially go to such said states and outline these policies and talk about how they would disproportionately help out individuals in those specific state or states. But I have to take a sort of cynical approach 
when it comes to uh, this answer that Bernie provides where he mentions that uh, Biden and Harris should do a similar approach such as campaigning in such states like Kentucky and talking about the need to raise the federal minimum wage. I don't at all in no way shape or form see that coming from a Biden administration. And Anderson Cooper even mentions how it's difficult to get these policies through because complacency can often set in, especially since you've just removed Trump. And I think in many ways it's he's probably right in that regard. Because remember, the public option was advocated by President Obama and was quickly pushed to the margins post-presidency. Now, I'm curious to see what happens with Joe Biden and the public option, let alone some of the other policies he's talked about. Will he at least mention them, such as in interviews or even during his time in the White House or various press conferences that he's going to hold? I don't think it's going to be at the forefront of his intellect. I think his presidency is largely just conceptualized as trying to bring in civility and or decorum, which are superficial terms that define an individual as being presidential. Therefore, I would have to disagree slightly with Bernie Sanders' optimism here. But nonetheless, let's see definitively and explicitly what he had to say on Anderson Cooper's show, Anderson Cooper 360. A lot of what you're saying, though, depends on, you know, I, I remember talking to you in the past, and, and I don't want to misquote you, on, but, but just I, I remember you saying that, it, you know, to get some of these things accomplished requires not only an outpouring at the ballot box, but also an ongoing outpouring right. of people being involved. That's right. And there's a, lot of, right. there's a lot of folks, and I'm wondering if, if you get this sense, who are sort of exhausted and... You know, they feel Joe Biden got elected, Democrats, and now maybe you're taking their foot off the, the gas pedal. Well, we can't afford to do that. And I know that there are incredible grassroots organizations who are working in Georgia, working all over this country, bringing working people together to demand that we create an economy that works for all of us and not just the few. And I think that if you had a President Biden, a Vice President Harris, going to Kentucky, and asking the workers there whether they're satisfied with a $7.25 an hour minimum wage. You know what? I think Mitch McConnell may start to move. And I think that's true for Republican senators all over the country. The truth is that today people are hurting in a way that we have not hurt for generations. People want action. And I think if the Biden administration is strong and forceful and comes out, with a list of proposals that the American people are saying, yeah, that's what we need. Of course we should cover health care for all. Of course we got to stop being ripped off by the drug companies who charge us 10 times more for insulin than they do in Canada. Let's go, Joe. Let's do it. And if we can rally the American people, even if we don't control the Senate, I think we can get a hell of a lot done. There we have Bernie Sanders' uh, question in regards to... Uh the need to sort of keep this sort of movement and or momentum going and the urgency associated with keeping it moving. I take a more cynical approach, but nonetheless, I still agree with Bernie Sanders' theoretical proposition that it only takes, or what it essentially takes, is the demos, ordinary people organizing and mobilizing in order for these sort of monumental policies to come to fruition. And the reason why I take a cynical approach to what Bernie Sanders had to say is not because I disagree with Bernie Sanders from a theoretical standpoint. The only disagreement I have is when he mentions that Biden and Harris need to do this and even to the certain extent will do this 
It's just not the reality in regards to how the neoliberal Democrats govern. They're not going to be holding rallies in Kentucky in regards to fighting to increase the federal minimum wage. Therefore, this is where I think that distinction between the neoliberal Democrats and the progressive Democrats, such as a Bernie Sanders or an AOC or other elected officials within the House and Senate, should essentially take that approach. So, for example, if Biden's not standing strong on some of the policy platforms that he mentioned, such as a public option, let alone Medicare for all, such as raising the federal minimum wage to $15, such as dealing with issues pertaining to holding Wall Street accountable, let alone corporate plutocrats, especially in regards to offshore tax havens and not paying your fair share. If Biden's not standing strong on these policies that he talked about, then I think he, Bernie Sanders, should essentially take that position and go to those states and essentially tell those states that these specific politicians, in Joe Biden's case, in this situation, argued for these policies. Therefore, it's on you as the demos to push your legislators, such as a Mitch McConnell, let alone a Joe Biden, to support these progressive policies that will disproportionately help you as the working class, especially in states like Kentucky.